Hello guys, Russia is breaking its own deadly record. 400,000 dead Russian invaders. Just think, 400,000 Russian soldiers died since the start of full-scale invasion. Died for nothing, not heroically, but as war criminals and invaders. And today we also learn about the death of the only real oppositioner, Alexei Navalny, in one of the prisons on the far, far east of Russia. Of course, he was killed by Putin. Navalny is not the best friend of Ukraine. He was a typical Russian imperialist, but of course, much more sane than Putin, and he would never threaten the world with nuclear attacks. But what frightens me most with this 400,000 dead Russians and the killed oppositioner is the fact that we all knew it coming. We all knew Putin would kill Navalny, and we also know that 500,000, a million of Russians will die just because they don't think much in Russia and they don't change anything. They enjoy authoritarian regime, Putin rules, and threatening the world. And that's a tragedy. Let me tell you more. My name is Anna, and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda, fake news and their invaders on our lands. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. As I have already mentioned, what frightened me most in this information about 400,000 dead Russians and Navalny killed by Putin's regime is the fact that we all knew and we all know it's coming, but there is nothing that we can do. There are so many global leaders, political influencers, and people who tend to be really great on this planet size uh, level, but they still cannot do anything to Russia. And they still pretend that Putin is a president and Russia is a real country when it is a prison and a great criminal organization that can ruin all of our planet. And some serious steps has to be taken. Just think about that. We all knew Putin would kill Navalny and we simply observed this online. We all knew Putin would kill Prihozhin and he did really quickly after his march to the Kremlin. Nemtsov and there are hundreds of people I can mention who were killed during Putin's reign. Russians will not protest. Russians will accept that as a very powerful message that don't you mess with a superhero and a super masculine leader. But we have to understand this message as Russia is not going to change until it is stopped and severely reconstructed. Remember to subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine. This helps a lot spread information and fight against Russian toxic narratives. And they are really toxic because they cause chaos and in your countries too. Putin knows that and he often uses democracy to ruin democracy. And that's what we see with Navalny. He had a chance to escape imprisonment. He was poisoned while flying on an airplane in 2020. It was Novichok. It was really difficult to save him because he was in coma, taken to the German clinic. And he was advised even by Frau Merkel not to return back to Moscow, but he chose a different fate and was really quickly imprisoned. Honestly, he was not a danger to Putin, especially in that far east prison of Russia with a very romantic name, Polar Wolf. Uh, no track of his life, his condition was available and for months actually his family knew nothing about his health and wh where he is. But today, early in the morning, a very brief notice appeared on Russian news services stating that after a walk in the morning, he felt really bad. All the necessary measures were taken, but he died. I will remind you, he is, was born in 1976. Uh, he is not old. Perhaps before all of this poisoning and other stuff, he was a healthy man. He was the only active oppositioner in Russia. He was writing articles and he was very much focused on 
anti-corruption cases, treating Putin as the main criminal oligarch and filming lots of his crimes, money laundering and other stuff. Once again, Navalny was not about Ukraine or protection of international agreement. He was very much centered on internal Russian affairs. When Putin annexed Ukraine in 2014, he actually supported this act, but later he switched to the idea that Ukraine must have borders 1991. He promised to return to these agreements if he is elected the president, but we all know how his uh, destiny evolved after that. Honestly, I do not understand why he decided to return to Russia after being poisoned, and perhaps he would be of better use if he stayed somewhere in the democratic rotting, as Putin would say, West, working, writing and demonstrating the crimes of Putin's regime. But that's his choice. And I think one of the greatest mistakes that many of us do, uh, we believe that Russia is not bad as it is. It is worse than we can expect. Putin is worse than we can think about him. So. Uh, when in doubt, always choose the worst case scenario with Russia. And I don't see any signs of changing. Let me know in the comments below, do you think some protests are possible in Moscow, St. Petersburg or other big cities that supported Navalny on his funeral? And will there be a real funeral, especially taking into account that Putin's elections, Putin's elections are really close in March? Let me know what do you think, because I had this suspicion, what if uh, the official funeral of the only oppositioner may start some protest, but as a Ukrainian, I greatly doubt Russians are able to protest. And typically such acts of violence as killing oppositioners, they suppress Russian people. In Ukraine, we start acting, we start changing something because we do not accept this internal prison in our own country. And in Russia, it's very effective to uh, breed people. Let me know what do you think. And of course, it's a tragedy when you think about 400,000 lost lives of Russian soldiers here in Ukraine with no need to at all to cross our borders, kill our people, destroy our infrastructure, of course, they always have a choice. It is not the protection of the motherland. It is Ukrainian soldiers who stand and who kill and uh, who protect the land. And uh, Russians, they are invaders and criminals and they always have a choice. They may stay at home, they may shake their home from inside because definitely at the moment it is an embassy of hell on the planet. And there are many, many officers, there are many uh, important people, many generals, many uh, top military officers of Russian army who became fertilizers of uh, Ukrainian soils, totally unnecessary, but unfortunately Russia has millions of people it is ready to sacrifice and it demonstrates it with each day. For example, today 1,200 people died around Avdiivka and in other heavy zones of the front lines, but of course Russians are not worried about that. I don't know, what can we do with this country? Because it is an embodiment of evil, darkness and total disrespect to human values. So guys, once again Putin is sending this really strong message into the global uh, media sphere, he has to be stopped and Russia has to be stopped. And people who support him, we have to work with them for decades, just as it happened after the defeat of Hitler. It is going to be a difficult task, but don't choose this option not to interfere into the internal Russian affairs, because you see this internal Russian affairs are actually killing oppositioners or killing any other alternative. And it's our task to stop this. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. It's an honor and a blessing to have you in my life. Remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, I am available on Instagram, Threads, Twitter and Discord. Check our merch shop with lots of beautiful items that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. And most importantly, united we stand. Slava Ukraini!